Getting accurate colors for your projects is super important, especially if you're doing a lot of commercial work. Nailing brand colors, for example, is super critical. You know, if you're working in big ad campaigns or TV spots, you need to have those colors perfect. Now on the high end, there's lots of uber expensive broadcast monitors and video I.O. devices you can buy. There's also a lot to know about color space and color management, but for now we're gonna skip all that, start small, and get a couple things to help us dial in whatever your workflow currently is. The first step is to capture accurate colors on set. And to do that, you're gonna need one of these color charts. This is a Calibrite Color Checker Passport. Um, it used to be made by x -Rite. now there's a new company called Calibrite. It doesn't matter, it's the same thing. Now I like this chart because it's really small and easy to take around. And it's got you know, separate color swatches up here, it's got skin tone swatches, you know, your luminance swatches. Plus on top of that, it has a white balance target and a focus checker. So it's really handy to have out on set. There are other color charts out there. You don't have to use the Calibrite one. Just make sure you grab one that's compatible with DaVinci Resolve, and I'll have a couple links below to some options for you. So to use the chart, either before shooting or between takes, with your lighting setup turned on, just take the chart and film it for a few seconds. And I would repeat this every time you have a significant lighting change or move to a new setup. Then you can pull that shot into Resolve and use the color chart function. It gives you a nice little UI to line up the color swatches, and then you tell it the specs of your footage, you hit match, and boom. You have a baseline color correction, which if done correctly, should accurately display how things looked on set. And now you can take that grade and you can apply it to the actual footage and use that as a base. Now we're gonna come back to Resolve in a minute, but the next step in the process is monitoring. You're gonna to need to have a calibrated color accurate display. Again, we're gonna pass on the fancy broadcast monitors for now. You can work on a regular computer monitor. I would just find one that has pretty high sRGB or Rec. 709 coverage, or maybe even P3 color space. Now, once you have a monitor in hand, you're gonna to wanna to pick up a color calibrator. That's one of these guys. This is the Datacolor Spider X Elite, I think. I'm pretty sure I got it on sale. And basically what it does is it calibrates your monitor for you with a custom profile. It's pretty easy to use, and the software walks you through the process without much issue. You rest it on your display and the software will then flash various colors for it to take readings of and create a custom color profile for your computer. You can toggle the calibration on and off as well to see what difference it made. If you want to stay in the Calibrite slash x ecosystem, they also have a color calibrator in the Color Checker Display Pro. I have links to both of the calibrators in the description below. We're in DaVinci Resolve right now, but using scopes would apply in Premiere or Final Cut or anywhere else. So the first thing we should do is we should pop out our scopes in the corner. Make sure you have your four by turned on if it looks like this. And I like to use a few of these. So first we'll talk about the parade and that shows our red, green, and blue channels separated and we can see each one. The waveform is each of those channels overlaid on top of each other and the spots where it's white are where the channels are evenly balanced. Uh, so that results in like a clean white or a clean gray in our image. So in this case, like my shirt is nice and clean gray. And then the vector scope on the bottom gives us a spread of all the colors in the image displayed on a color wheel. So you can see like the red, magenta, blue kind of goes all the way around. I'm also going to turn a few things on to help us out. The first is a skin tone indicator on the vector scope. So we'll go up in here, show skin tone indicator. And that gives us a nice line right where my skin should be. As you can see right now, I'm probably leaning a little pink. I also like to go up and turn on display qualifier focus. And what that does is if I switch to the qualifier tool, if I hover all around the image, I can actually see the exact part of the image I'm looking at on the scope. Okay, let's go back to the color chart. So first I'm going to actually go to our output sizing over here. And I'm just gonna crop it to the chart so we can see things a little bit better. You can actually see that the color swatches on the chart line up with the vector scope, right? You can see all those primary colors are represented there. And you can use that to kind of compare if the chart lined it up correctly. And if they didn't, you can use hue and saturation curves probably to dial it in a bit. So if I look at it, I'd say maybe the yellow and the red maybe are just a smidge off, not by much. So I could just go to the yellow we can just kind of nudge it over a bit. Same thing with the red. Nudge that over a smidge. And we're pretty on target there. Maybe take the green. Also, the green looks a little leaned over. 
Okay, so I feel pretty good about that. I'm gonna make a new node and then we can compare the grays. So what's handy about the grayscale is that we can use it to kind of dial in our exposure. So the white should probably hover around 90%. The black should hover probably around 10%. And the gray is actually a 40% gray. And if we look over in our waveform, you can see it's a little lower than 40. Our white's a little lower than 90. So generally we're a smidge underexposed. And you can also see that our green channel is a little raised and our blue channel is a little under. So we're also off balance still a little bit. That's easy, we can correct that as well. We're using our primaries, our lift gamma gains. So we'll just pull the gain up. And we'll keep going until that hits around 90. And that was basically enough. That kind of brought our midtone up as well to that 40 mark. And then if we want to balance it out, we probably can just take the green channel in the gain, lower that a bit. And the blue channel also looks a little low, so we probably can boost the blue channel. And now you can see that both our white highlight turned white and our gray turned white in the waveform. So that means that we are now pretty nicely color balanced in our image. Looks like our darks are not balanced though, so we're probably gonna need to pull the blue down, the blue channel down. You can see that it's raised in our parade. And that's all right too. We can just go to our lift, which is our darker parts of the image, and we can just kind of bring that down, kind of offset our gain again, our gamma again, excuse me. So lift our gamma back up, and you just kind of do a little dance until you're looking pretty close. Somewhere around there is pretty balanced. All right, so I'm going to turn off our blanking so we can see our whole image again. And I'll turn off these nodes. This is what it looked like with just the color chart. And then we kind of made some corrections. And that is a pretty balanced image that we can use as a base grade now that we have finessed our color curves and the lift gamma gain controls so we could get it right. So that was my process for getting accurate color in your video projects relatively easily and on a budget. Of course, this is all kind of surface level in terms of using scopes and color grading, but hopefully this gives you a head start on dialing in your looks for your commercial clients. I actually have a lot of DaVinci Resolve content coming up, so please get subscribed if you want to see that. And thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.